Thanks for joining us here at CES. Uh, we are going to be talking about VR, AR, and the future of the entertainment landscape. I'm Devinder Hardwar, Senior Editor at Engadget. And joining me today are some great panelists. Uh, we have uh, Oscar Werner, uh, Technology President at Toby. Hi. Uh, Hello. Tom Harding, Director of Immersive Products at Samsung. Hello. Hey, and Ricard Cyber uh, from HTC Vive. Hi. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you guys for joining us. And we have the new Vive Pro just sitting up here, too, which is pretty it's cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the VR products we've seen so far, or the VR experiences? We've seen a lot of movie tie-ins. We've seen some, like, yeah, you know, we've seen some games. And we've seen some really cool, arty, experimental things. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts so far on what we've seen? And what are your favorites, basically? It's exciting because um, since last CS uh, on the Vive platform, we've grown from 1,000 to over 2,000 titles. And it kind of started out with primarily independent developers. And in the past couple of months, you had you know, the most famous uh, AAA titles like Doom and Fallout and LA Noir uh, coming to market. And I think we're seeing that not just the, the gaming industry, but also the movie industry, like Spider-Man or Star Wars. Uh, so I think uh, we're moving from independent to more high quality titles. And of course, there's much more choice than we had a year ago. And we're seeing it's a new technology. Typically with the new technology, it, it takes longer time to adapt, but then the power of it is more, it, it's much, much bigger than you think. And I think that's where we are. I mean, we've seen VR come, we've seen the hype, we've seen it go down a little bit, and now we're seeing a groundswell. And I think if we let this thing go for quite a few years, it's going to be amazing. I mean, just, just the concept of, if I take it back to what it really is, it's like, well, will people want to immerse themselves in other types of completely inclusive experiences? And the answer is then is yes. You know, from an innovation perspective, two years have gone past since Gear VR started uh, and, and sort of uh, uh, launched. Uh, the ecosystem has grown dramatically, well over 1,200 titles, I think, on the, uh, on the Gear VR store uh, today. Um, and we've just seen uh, just dramatic amounts of uh, innovation uh, over that time. Uh, the applications we launched with, in hindsight, look rather rudimentary, and we've seen a rapid evolution since then, not only from premium IP, but also from indie developers as well. I think live streaming is another area where we're going to see rapid advancements in the next year or two. The general sense I get is that uh, people feel like this is kind of like the early days of the internet, right? The, the mid-90s when things were kind of new and exciting. Is that the impression you guys are getting? Like the tools aren't quite ready yet? It's all, it's, it's kind of fun because of that, right? It's just pure potential. We're sort of emerging. It's like the early days where it's sort of gaming in the enthusiast phase. But I think it's, it's moving into, uh, if you're a designer, you don't want to design in 2D, you want to do it in 3D. If you're an educator, you can create much more immersive educational experiences that are more memorable and you, know, you have a higher recall. So I think we're approaching these other segments uh, as we move into 2018. When I look at VR today, it's like, yeah, but you're pointing to stuff with your forehead. And I kind of dare to anybody here in the panel or in the audience to know, can you really state any single, inter in any single real life interaction where you point to an object with your forehead to interact? When do you do, I want to pick up this thing. When do you do, when do, you do that? I mean, you don't really do that. That can be improved, but then you got the content and you got the kind of uh, graphical experience as well. What's amazing with virtual reality is that you have so many sensory input that your brain actually thinks that you're in the experience. And I think now with the, the new Pro, you have much better resolution, you have much better audio, you are wireless, you can move around, the comfort is much better. And, and I do think that the challenge is actually for creators and storytellers to use this new medium, not just to you know, have nice games, but actually how do you tell an interactive story? It's a new format, and I think we are having new movies like Ready Player One coming out, trying to use that format to actually tell stories, cinematic stories in VR. And I think that's where we're really in the early, early stage. I think the technology is here, of course, it's all going to be better. But I do think that we have a new generation of creators and story makers that needs to be brought up. We're trying to replicate reality here. That's the mantra we all have. You know? And I think when you talked about interfaces, the interfaces we have to replicate reality in the VR headsets today, it's kind of limited. It's, the hand controllers, right? And it's your voice. But humans, we interact and we, we, we interact with people and the world in so many, so many more multifaceted ways. So I think the bandwidth of communicating between us and the headset or us and the game needs to be increased 
mm -hmm. um, in order for us to really to really experience the true uh, true world. And let me just uh, bring in AR into this conversation because we've been really VR focused right now. Um, you know, I, I'm personally like I've tried all the VR headsets and I've tried so many of those experiences. AR, it still seems like we're trying to figure out the best ways to make it work. I feel like Pokemon Go is the best example of that being successful with consumers so far. What do you guys think about that aspect of this sort of immersive technology? And uh, you know, how do you think it's going to interact with VR down the line? Yeah. I, I think, if you don't mind, I, um, yeah. I, what really gets me excited is I think there's fundamentally going to be a point of convergence. Uh, and I think what's really exciting is that much of the learnings we get from VR are informing AR, and similarly, AR is going to really inform VR. But ultimately, it's going to be a case of a consuming choosing how much or how little of the real world they want to occlude, depending on the level of immersion that they need uh, that experience or how much context they need in the real world as they go about their daily business. It's all mixing now, but to me, AR is like, it's, it's, it's a few years behind, um, it's coming. But then I see it in a couple of stages, you know. You can see it now, it's in, in enterprise or specialty applications. You can use AR today and it's super, super powerful, you know. And then I see, and you obviously have the phone-based AR. But then you see, you know, in the next phase is, all right, you put a headset on where people don't really care how big that headset is. Right. I mean, your kids playing Pokemon Go, they can have Pikachu in your hand. That's a super powerful use case just there. I can run around and see monster. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. But the next level really is, either, I mean, in, in lenses or in glasses, and then it becomes ubiquitous. I mean, then it replaces the screen. So that's, that's a few years more, more out, of course, mm -hmm. but that's a true, true revolution. Then, then we're really talking about the internet revolution or the smartphone revolution, or why do we have, why do we have these stupid flat screens, you know? <laughs> AR has this enormous potential, but I think we need to sort of agree on what, it, what do we mean with AR? I yeah. mean, with virtual reality, You'll, reality will change. You will think that you are in that experience. AR today is kind of augmented your camera that will you know, in, inject some digital objects, but it's not augmenting your reality. You're getting additional sort of visual information. So I do agree with you that the true augmented reality, we're actually not augmenting the camera, but you're augmenting your reality is probably a few years out, but it's of course, it's gonna be massive. I do also think that there will be this spectrum. So it, because if you're creating an experience with dinosaurs, for example, for educational purposes. Of course, you could have an immersive VR experience uh, on, the, on the Vive Pro, but of course, you could also have the little dinosaurs showing up on our table, and we can talk about T-Rex or the Stegosaurus. I think when we're used to talking about movies and things like that, those are long experiences. We're usually saying like 90 minutes to two hours. I haven't yet found a VR experience that kind of can sustain that. Do you think that's something we should be working towards, or do you think it's better off focusing on shorter, bytes of experiences, uh, because there's a lot of information to take in, right? So we have thousands of experiences now, and of course, you know, we, we were basically sort of a year or two in, into VR, so many of the experiences are shorter. Uh, and I think what, what, what the model that works is like the blue, for example, it's a very, very popular underwater experience. So they started with a whale, and then they added these kind of chapters. And I do think that it's a great way uh, to learn from, you know, the snackable YouTube culture or the episodic thinking from Netflix. I do think that's coming. But when you look at uh, the new AAA titles coming out, like Fallout, which people, you know, come back to all the time, I do think that people are spending, you know, we're seeing that, we'll see people are spending significantly more time in VR. You need to focus on what people use yeah. and take it from there. I mean, it's like, throw something out there, learn from that and go. And I'm 100% I'm convinced you're gonna get to long experiences. For example, I mean, when, when you really get to true, good social apps, obviously with true eye contact as well, uh, then, then people, it will be kind of less gamified. <laughs> you, you, won't, you won't kill people so many times, hopefully. So I think I, there's, gonna, there's gonna emerge experiences which are longer, but you need to work on the base that you have. And, and also, sort of, yeah, again, it's a, I think it's a great opportunity to sort of reframe what entertainment looks like and uh, get rid of all of the uh, sort of the architecture we've become accustomed to in terms of what a music event should look like, what a game should be, what a first person shooter should look like after we've all trained ourselves, you know, sitting several feet away from the TV on the couch. Um, there's an amazing amount of innovation and experimentation in terms of what makes an entertaining experience, how do we deal with fatigue. Um, is, do, do you really need to move around uh, yeah. and, and travel long distances? I feel like super hot is the best balance of that. Oh, there, man, there is yeah. some interaction, but it's pretty slow. Absolutely. Uh, but our time is up. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are bringing to CS this year. Thank you for joining us, folks.
Thank you for having us. Thank you.